can definitely yeah, you can hear, hear that a kind bit, of bu- little bu- bit of a stampiness there. Yeah, too like, much 200 I've heard that in a lot hertz. of kick drums over the years as well. It, we should probably talk about kick tuning because there's a lot of nonsense talked about it, isn't there? Hi everybody, I'm Dan and this is AD. Uh, we do psychedelic trance production and my artist's name is Divination, this is Scorp. We've just released a pack on Future Phonic, uh, which are Kick 2 presets for the plug-in Kick 2. Uh, we're just going to walk through some of those kicks that we've made today and also some of the features you might want to use to adapt the kicks and make them your own. Um, we figured yep. out during the process that there are quite a few do's and don'ts uh, on how to make the kicks uh, work for you. All right, so yeah, let's get to it and we'll show some of the dials to touch and not touch. Uh, um, light-handedness we've come up with is very important, isn't it? Not not yeah. touching the dials very much. Now we've designed all these kicks in a very high quality studio and we're sure they're all great kicks that you can put straight in your tracks, but you might find you want it slightly longer or shorter for a start. Yeah. So we've worked mm-hmm. out that with There's the way we've designed There's a few simple steps, it, isn't yeah. there, that you can follow where you're only going to improve the result. Um, and there's definitely a few things where you can screw it up really easily and it's worth pointing out um, a few things that we've learned along the way that uh, yeah can achieve the best results. What you might find is that um, you'll flip through the presets, find a kick with a really nice character that you like, yeah. um, but perhaps we designed it for a, a track that is 134 BPM or 155 BPM and your track's 140 or, or whatever, you know? Yeah. The very easiest thing you can do and probably the most important thing to check once you've settled on a, um, a preset um, that you want to use as your starting point or as your uh, kick is to get the length right. Because if uh, you're using a, a kick that is designed at 134 BPM in your 150 BPM track, you're going to find it's a bit long mm. and will start to be flabby. And yeah, your, it's your might track have a bit too much tightness. Uh, sort of late sub, energy sub on the ends you know and you want for for the faster music you want a shorter kick because you know that it's more machine yeah. gun style you don't want that kick drums mm-hmm. tail getting into the bass line and messing up the mix and yeah, yeah and there's different philosophies up. on how to deal with that issue uh, some producers um, will use much shorter kicks which are pretty much over by the end of the 16th which obviously gives maximum room for the bass line and some producers are doing that to really good effect Whereas a lot of other producers like a longer kick where you're fading out um, well into that second bass note. And that's where the problems usually uh, yeah, occur, aren't they? Where that yeah, the seconds, end of the kick meets yeah. the bass line. So Everyone's you've got, you've had got the this kick problem. drum occupying the first 16th, then the second 16th. That's where you want your energy that's to start That's where the fading. magic needs yeah. to happen. Um, you've got, you've got yeah. to get the phase aligned properly there. So let's have a little look at that. We'll have a look at um, the VPS scope as well which is what we use for an oscilloscope yeah this is how so we, we see what's going on this is how we address what the length of these kicks is doing to the phase uh correlation between the bass line and the kick drum because it's very important part of uh making a good kick and bass for side trance especially yeah they have to um, they have to uh, coexist yeah they need be unified to, they need yeah. to work together and not, not amplify each other and they don't want to cancel each other either exactly so this Those is about phase alignment points. we call this i guess yeah. And that's to do with the length as well, isn't it, very much? I mean, we can adjust the pitch slightly as well, but we'll look at the length first. Do a little example here. And, um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, show you just a very quick and easy way when you don't want to get too much into the weeds um, or get your hands too dirty. You just want a good result fast and know that you're uh, making mm. a positive improvement. So, so yeah, like, uh, I brought up um, an Ableton project here and it's got, like, a bounce of a... Uh, kind of an intro opening from an old track of mine and we've made the kick and bass separate and we've got the old kick that was all already in the track on mm-hmm. one channel and the pulses bank on the other and that came out about how many years ago oh god i'm not even sure four or four, five, four years, or five ago, years ago so this is an old old kick and that's yep. why we've chosen this because we've decided to up obviously upgrade update, it. upgrade the kick and use one of ours uh, new ones from all the learnings we've done so just like very quickly uh, play yeah. Like just the kick and bass on its own with the old kick. And it was one of my good kicks at the time. It's not terrible by any means, but yeah, I'm sure we can improve them on it. And yeah, with the backing. So yeah, just to give you an idea, we're in D sharp here at 145 BPM. Oh yeah, let's bring up our scope. This is free, you can get it with any copy of Computer Music Magazine digitally. 
And yeah, it's one of the best ones I've found. There's not many uh, paid yeah, for or free that do a better job. It does its thing. So yeah, let's just play a little bit of uh, the loop and look what's happening here. So yeah, you can see uh, here it's pretty good, but um, yeah, I think the interaction with the bass line could be improved, do you reckon? It doesn't look as clean yeah, or as tight as it could it, be. It looks all right. Why don't we, uh, if you hit play again, if you just hit freeze on the plugin so you can, so we can look at the, the phase correlation there. Yeah, good point. So we play it and then hit the freeze button. Okay, so yeah, you can see in this area here, um, we're getting a little bit of cancellation and a, bit, and a yeah. few wobbles. It's by no means terrible. It's not getting overblown and it's not getting completely sucked away, but there's room for improvement for sure. Yeah, it's almost there, isn't it? But you just got a little bit of distortion there. You don't want that sort of to be destroying itself at that part. No, it ideally will add not. Potentially to the out of control frequencies in the sub end. So, so we've got. Um, yeah, the first preset here. Let's just play the loop for a bit and cycle through a few until uh, something appeals. The platinum kick. Yeah, it's not Seems a bad starting nice. point. Maybe we can let's nudge maybe the length very slightly, see if we can get it even tighter, but I think that's quite a, that one yeah, well, quite well. Yeah, well, on the interface, it's a bit of a weird one because what they've done, when you're looking at these envelopes, their time in the first part of this graph is tiny, whereas it's stretched out quite a lot here. Yeah. You can see that although the pitch here is at 39, um, yeah, the kick's already finished yeah. by then. So we're on a sweeping down right way through the pitches on a smooth curve. It, it's useful though, they do show but you where, this yeah, line so where, here where an eighth is. So we could actually have our kick ever so, so slightly that's longer at if we wanted. 45 hertz there is actually then, isn't it? If you look at where it says there. Yeah. So, like we're at 145 BPM, so a sixteenth is about 103 odd milliseconds. So about 206 is where we want to end our kick. You can see it's at 202 at the moment, so we can open up a little bit more. Something like that looks pretty clean. So yeah, now we've kind of uh, at least tightened up the uh, length. Let's give that another quick listen. Check the scope. Yeah, it's shutting off nice and cleanly before the um, offbeat. So once you get to this point, you can sometimes uh, improve that phase interaction, but you have to be really careful. We found that like uh, the pitch envelope is sacred. Like the smallest move on it can disrupt the purity of the sweep. Mm -hmm. um, if it dwells in one frequency for even slightly too long, you can feel a lumpiness and that that purity's gone. Mm -hmm. And it and it will only get emphasized the, with processing. So it's not something you can EQ out or solve later. Very, very small moves on this pitch envelope. We've done yeah. our best to like get the smoothest glide down through all the frequencies you need. Yeah. And one thing we found is that generally by the time you get to the very end of your kick, you want to be somewhere between 35 and 42, 43 hertz, much outside of that range, and you're starting to like uh, lose the, the fatness and the fullness. Mm -hmm. um, we should probably talk about kick tuning, because there's a lot of nonsense talked about it, isn't there? Yes. Well, yeah, a lot of people believe that, uh, yeah, you, they talk to me about tuning your kick to the key of your bass line. Yeah, I, mean, I, understand, I understand why they would say this. It, it sounds it kind like of it makes sense, sense, doesn't it? It yeah. makes a lot more sense in genres like techno, yeah. where you actually are using the kick as your bass line sometimes, exactly. or having a much longer kick. Or now, this makes a lot more sense. 808's but tuned having, for yeah, hip-hop and stuff, having a long, fine, yeah. Having a long standing sine wave residing at a certain frequency for a side trance track particularly, that's not going to work. I mean, it's no. just going to get in the way of everything. It's going to definitely mess with your bass line. If There's a lot it, of reasons why. If you do it perfectly, it's going to cancel it out. You know, well. in, a, in a club situation in particular, uh, you've got to think that like spaces have resonances and nulls. Yeah. Um, you might have a track which is perfectly EQ'd, uh, perfectly balanced, and you've tuned your kick drum so that the last half of it falls on the, the key of your track. Yeah. But the dimensions of the club you're playing in, there's a massive swell at that frequency exactly. or cancellation, and all of a sudden, your track doesn't work at all. Imagine that. Like the philosophy <coughs> I've come up with is that 
a kick drum is like an impulse smeared in time. You want to represent all the frequencies smoothly all the way down. Yeah. Uh, and this has the benefit of exciting every frequency in a space, and therefore you're going to get less nulls, less peaks, and better translation yeah. and better power, right, in more spaces. And I think that can only be a good thing. And another a good reason why you wouldn't tune a kick drum, say your key's in A, which obviously is quite high, but it, people use A, Yeah. then if you tune the end of your kick to, the, to that A, you're stuck at 55 hertz. You've got no yeah. bottom end below 55 hertz in your track. Well, that's just nuts yeah. to me. Why would well, you, you ever want that? you definitely don't want to finish at 25 <laughs> either because that's no. like... It's inaudible. That means your really. tail is going to be swamping down, getting into the, yeah. like the low sub by the time you're halfway through the end of the kick. So that's going to sound really strange as well. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, that's our philosophy on tuning and why we don't do it. And yeah. we don't really <laughs> see a value in, in particularly in side trance. Yeah. Like, Let's have a quick little look at the amplifier because we're... Yeah, so let's look at the Move on to that. Let's talk about the front here. of this bit here, the tap part, so, and then we'll yeah. go to this thing. And also, like you were saying to me before Zoom the other here. day, uh, the way that they've laid this out for us, it's kind of like an EQ in reverse, isn't it? Like, we're yeah. seeing the high frequencies first, obviously. Yeah, this is a game-changer like way of thinking, actually, isn't it? If you can think of your amplitude envelope as an EQ, because you've got a pitch sweep going uh, from high to low, so it's like... Um, looking at an EQ but in reverse because you've got the high end on the left and the bass on the right yeah which is obviously just switched so it follows that um yeah the lower your amplitude envelope is here the less sub you're going to have for digging out mid-range um in this area which corresponds to yeah. to here like uh you can you can EQ your kick just using the amp envelope <laughs> So why don't we have a quick little listen just to the effect of what... This is the first part here, and this is what we're controlling here, is how loud and how proud the tap of the kick is, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, let's give that a little uh, listen, and so I'll just adjust it. a little it. bit, yeah, and, yeah. and give, give that a little shot. Cool. Yeah, you can really hear it turn to plastic and lose the exactly. warmth, can you? Because, yeah, it's a... A bit too much Certain high. Tracks require <laughs> a lot more pop on the top of the kick drum. But yeah, yeah. it's usually a, a little bit shaved off here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If you find your kick's getting a bit too pointy, I'd look at this uh, first part here. I'm zoomed in full here, you know, so you've kind of got this whole window to um, work in. But it's such a short resolution, really, for uh, working in here. Like, uh, sometimes it's better to do a little bit of EQ high up just because... Uh, it's more familiar uh, way to edit, but yeah. you can use curves a bit like uh, this, um, and I'll show you like how, how this can uh, really sculpt uh, the impression of the attack and how it gels mm -hmm. with the uh, the pluck of the bass line as yeah. well, because you want that kind of unification between the highs of that that as well. So. Something like that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. essentially we found that the character we liked on a kick, um, which I think works nicer than what was there, we tuned the length um, to ensure that we're uh, not overstepping into the offbeat bass note. Mm. And yeah, we've tailored the tap a bit just to give the kind of um, the balance with the uh, kind of pluck and high end of the bass line that we yeah. like. That's the simplest way to use uh, presets, really, in our opinion, isn't it? Should we have a little quick look at some uh, sort of small pitch adjustments that you can get away with to not destroy the kicks that we've made, but like we say, yeah. to be able to fit them in your track a bit more? Because... I think once you start to get to grips with the idea that your amp envelope's your EQ, um, you start to yeah. think in, like, I've, I've got the pitch sweep I want, now mm. I just need to carve away at that using the amp envelope and... I think flicking at, uh, through the presets, yeah. you get an idea of like the kind of shapes that start working. Why don't we find a more blocky one, and then we'll, we'll carve a bit of a shape out of that. Oh yeah, I mean, there's there are, definitely there's a few in yeah. this pack, isn't there? That they're a bit more. They're uh, really chunky. Like yeah, I wouldn't use them yeah, the way we've, they we've are. Had a look. I'll show you that EQ process using yeah, the Yeah, let's have a look at that. Um, okay, so on this section, let, let's go and find a kick which um, isn't working, and show you how to make it work. Right. That's yeah. it. That's an example, like you were saying earlier. You could have a shorter kick to have your bass line first note louder from the start, so you have more of a machine gun vibe rather than like yeah, a, a side chain. Yeah, roll. So a lot of people right now want to have that. They want to hear the kick and three notes almost. Da -da 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 -da. So yeah, Absolutely, to achieve yeah. that effect without having you know 
awful fallout. It's you're going to have to shorten or tame the amount yeah. of of fatness in the middle here. Of yeah, the and the, and the uh, way it tails out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's find. I mean, because there there are presets in here which are like super donkey for my tastes. Like, mm. I don't mean like donkey the animal, but like they have a massive donk and a bop yeah. in the mid range, which more, I find a bit too aggressive. More like a more like a pop. More like the more commercial trance kicks because they they they're residing a lot more in a, back, in a thinner yeah. range. Exactly. They're radio trying, friendly almost. Trying their best you know, to push through, and they can be. Yeah, they yeah. can make for a louder mix, but they can be quite offensive on the ears when when done wrong. Okay, so should we go um, go into that? Okay, so yeah, like I'm, I remember for a fact um, there was a preset called Lead Kick because precisely yeah. because it is way too heavy in yeah, every yeah. respect. It's got Super too much heavy. bass. It's got too much attack. It's got too much yeah. mid range. So yeah, let's just find that preset quickly. Um, yeah, let's roll through a few more. Yes, I mean, yeah, let's listen to this briefly, but uh, I want to carve way more mids out of this. Mm. And, um, yeah, I'll take you through uh, how you can go about doing this in a couple of minutes if you know what you're doing. Like, yeah. uh, it doesn't need to be that painful. So, yeah, let's listen to it uh, as it is now. Oh, yeah, you can definitely... Yeah, you can hear, hear like a kind bit, of... A little but, bit of a stampiness there. Yeah, too like, much 200 I've heard that in a lot hertz. of kick drums over the years as well, and it does fit certain tracks really well. Yeah, well, not uh, enough of it. You lose a lot of firmness, but when it's too much, it yeah. can uh, really get in front of uh, the leads and be a little bit distracting. Mm. I mean, that's one of the paradoxes with kick drums. Like, when you hear them with just the kick and the bass, you want them to sound hench and yeah, fat yeah. and killer and amazing. Um, and yeah. yet, at the same time, as soon as the music starts coming in, you want exactly. them to be subliminal and not, like, stealing focus. If, so. if your tap's that intense for a, for a start, it, it puts pressure on you needing to put much louder percussions, and suddenly everything's getting yeah. pushed up. And you're just getting, getting nasty. fatigue in your ears, you know. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's a more radio-friendly mix, but it's, you know, potentially a little... It's, it's going to sound a bit cheaper at the end, if anything because it's just not as deep and, yeah, exactly. and rich through the frequencies. So let's try and sort this kick out, like not be afraid to totally rework it. Cool. Um, so yeah, we can see like it's a little bit long for our tempo. This is probably for like a track uh, a few BPM slower. So for a start, let's bring our... Uh... Okay. That's a bit cleaner already. So yeah, we're just going to like now use... Uh, yeah, the envelopes. Well, I can hear so much 200 hertz. Let's just confirm okay, let's that with an analyzer. Yeah. Yeah, all this uh, extra 200 hertz here, I'd like to see this way more like this, really. So, like, starting point for me, uh, attacking the EQ using the amp envelope is going to be 200 hertz. Um, one way I found this quite useful for this is if you, like, look over your... Uh, curve here you get a readout at the top here of uh, the time and the uh, frequency mm -hmm. so we just want to find where 200 hertz resides in this kick sweep it's around about there yeah around about there cool like 0 0.017 seconds which is a good helpful point because we find that here now 17 see we're actually going maximum volume here at 200 hertz which normally uh, I wouldn't want to be at full volume till we're getting more towards 100 hertz so let's bring this over and carve more out here. Hmm. Let's go drastic for now. And again, it's interesting to see straight away, like, you know, we're, we're working over here, but a lot of that energy is residing in, in the, what looks like the tap portion of the yeah. of the kick. The first, you know, it is like, you know, 0 0.17 seconds, like 0.017, it's a 17 milliseconds out of, yeah. you know, and our whole kick's length is around 120 or something, so... I mean, this looks like a big fat block for an eighth now, which would probably be fantastic for an offbeat uh, trance track, but um, not leaving much room for the exactly, uh, yeah. 16th. Exactly, yeah. If you want a bigger kick that fills where the first bass note would go, you would want more of this energy left yeah, over. Yeah, some, something we could uh, have it <coughs> so that could like be fading a... out at a 16th yeah. if we were being really uh, 
could be a tip for people wanting to make more offbeaty stuff to add more of this sort of stuff there. Like, I mean, that's a sixteenth long, essentially. Yeah, a bit less than that. But um, let's go right away to the eighth. Um, we haven't even listened to it yet, but I already know this is going to sound more pleasant. Actually, what we could do, I suppose, is uh, if we duplicate this uh, preset. And on this second instance, we'll just bring up the uh, unedited preset, which was lead kick. Cool. Also, because it's very loud, uh, this kick as well, so might need turning down a smidge. <laughs> so, this is what we had before. Let's we'll look at our scope again. So, yeah, there's a lot of uh, bass. Here. It's all nicely in phase, there's no cancellation or uh, whatever, but mm. the last place you want more energy than anywhere else in the bar is this note, usually, well, yeah. isn't it? I mean, it's you don't it's the least have... rhythmically important part. You don't want overemphasis there, especially not mm. in the sub. Well, you don't particularly want your sub, the sub end really, you know, catching a bit of your bass line and then, you know, this part ending up louder than the tap of your kick. Exactly. I mean, the, on this example, maybe the bass line could be very slightly quieter anyway, but yeah. it's not like, it's still, like, this is quite a few dBs of... And you can tell it's too long. Like, hopefully the one we've edited now will clean it up. So let's... Mm. Yeah, let's check that out. Have a look. So, yeah, really nice uh, phase interaction. No, like, massive cancellations or swells, but mm. we are getting a bit more peak energy here in this second half which is actually the least important part of the bar usually yeah you want the most emphasis on the front and the offbeat so uh, a kind of swelling spikes of energy here could be yeah. tighter second 16th is not a place you really you want it to suddenly be we're, bigger we're starting to like it's drifting into the next bass note as well so mm. like uh, we're not getting such a nice uh, um Evenness there. Yeah, I mean, I'll often do that. I'll bounce kick. stuff down just to make sure it finishes. You know, when the bass yeah. line finishes, the notes and the kick drums exactly where they're supposed to, so that there's no bleed. But you know, uh, since using this, yeah, um, it's become much easier to get it right in, in this stage rather than having to do that later. So let's have a look at the preset we added, um, edited, and we haven't even listened to yet, um, just to see what's occurred there, and then I'll yeah. uh, open it and make a, a few small tweaks just to, uh, yeah, dial it in a bit more. So, the old one again. Now let's uh, check out the edited preset. Yeah. So, yeah, as you can see now, like, uh, the loudest part of this entire signal is this body of the kick drum mm. which is definitely what we want um what we might be able to do is like wiggle a couple of controls yeah. um a little bit to see if we can get a slightly nicer interaction that's here a bit, yeah it's a little, like, that's that's how you see there's a bit of like the way that that's broken up a bit that's that indicates a little bit of damage doesn't it so we, we want to shift the phase really slightly to get a little bit yeah and see if we can get, there if we can get a, yeah. a little better and as then opposed to boost we've now got a bit of loss there so yeah Obviously, the first bass note out of the three is usually quite a lot quieter than those, even if you have got that machine gun kind of sound. So you shouldn't be seeing as much destruction as that on the end of the kick. Uh, Ideally the not. 16th. So let's see what we can do. Um, we found generally um, adjusting the length slider, but very tentatively, like we're talking like one millisecond at a time, you know? Yeah, and you, you're playing the oscilloscope live and watching that happen. Let's have a see if we can do yeah, that now. Yeah, see if we can do that. On screen. not too bad better than before but we might be able to come a little bit bring a little bit of volume back now yeah subtly have a look yeah <laughs> try that yeah I think we can go uh, a little fuller on the tail
Yeah, it's pretty good. It's looking pretty good. I yeah. reckon because of this kick drum started with such a, a loud presence throughout the range, now that we're at this stage, we shaved quite a lot out of it. So you can see there, in my opinion, the bass uh, is very slightly louder than it would need to be finished. So if we drop the bass down by half a dB, yeah. um, that little bump you see there now on the second 16th will be disappeared from again, yeah. the, the, the correct volume correlation between the gimmick bass obviously is as important as as doing this stuff as well and yeah my philosophy is uh if where the kick uh and bass line meet the kick should always win the battle yeah definitely. you never want to hear a bass line suck energy out of a kick no it's m way uh more elegant easily to, done uh, though can happen to pull out um bass line to make room for the kick that's why i like to sort of do it visually myself a lot of the time because a lot of people don't have access to a good monitoring situation and you could you could be sitting in a room where you know your ears do trick you a bit the bass might sound quieter than, than it quieter is, than or it is or lower than it yeah, is yeah. and you know just by checking this visually to see that the kick is dominating the bass in some way it's a good yeah it's a, a good, good measure isn't it it should be yeah. at least a little bit louder you yeah know, generally definitely <clears throat> so yeah let's give an, another quick run through this loop um I'll, I'll refine the amp curve a tiny bit more yeah see um yeah we can take a little bit more of this out or whether it can take a bit more even but we'll have a quick listen looking pretty great now yeah i mean when you consider that we started out with this and yeah i'll, uh, I'll switch to the other one while it's playing you can just see how much uh, easier on the ears and more gelled it is it just sounds deeper as well without taking up so much room Like you say, we can probably make up for a little bit of the volume that we've uh, mm. taken out of the that. The volumes one. are surprisingly similar, though, but you can hear already how time, much headroom yeah. you've gained. Like you've got so much more space for higher end sounds. You've got space for more high mid sounds. Like just taming that like tap you, a bit. You said go up half a dB on yeah, the kick, it's... and I bet we'll see even, even a more positive uh, impact on the graph. Hang on. So, yeah, like, uh, those are a few tips that hopefully, uh, yeah, give you a bit more confidence to know what's worth yeah. adjusting and perhaps what's not worth risking adjusting uh, in the kick to, because like um, a lot of plugins, it's not perfect, um, but it, it's one of the better tools for making kicks we've yeah. found. The controls are very uh, sensitive, so as I hope you've all gathered from this information that you know don't go over the top and if you're worried yeah. your kicks are going to get this you know every time you try and edit one in the past it's it's destroyed it so you don't really see the point of having these settings because you don't want to touch them now hopefully you feel a little bit more confident, confident yeah. and and aware on, on on what dials to touch to just upgrade or fit your kicks fit these kicks more into your mixes yeah your style of mix mm. with the amount of highs you have and the amount of energy and yeah i mean various ranges that you have you know like uh, you could have the perfect kick drum but, um but for what track you know like if you might have what everyone considers the perfect kick drum but then the onus is on you for making sure that every other element in your mix is yeah as perfect for uh, to not let that yeah so, so, so that kick works um yeah if you found of any uh, helpful or have any more questions um, or would like us to do something in more detail perhaps in the future, yeah, let us know in the comments and uh, we'll do our best to uh, yeah. reply. Nice one. See you soon. Thanks a lot. <laughs>